Does tailoring your diet to your DNA make you healthier? Let's science it. Hey, welcome to Nourishable, I'm Dr. Lara. Generally, we all need to eat more fruits and vegetables, get more exercise, and drink less soda. Good nutrition advice doesn't change much over time, and it's pretty much the same for pretty much everyone. But advances in science now allow you to sequence your genome for under $100. Researchers are studying the interactions between genes and nutrition to determine whether your DNA should dictate your diet. In a day when you can get everything ultra-personalized, does tailoring nutrition guidance to your DNA make you even healthier? Enter Nutrigenetics, the science investigating how variations in your genes affect how your body uses nutrients. Have you ever seen this label on a can of diet soda? Phenylketonurics contains phenylalanine. Phenylketonuria is a condition where a single gene is altered, preventing the breakdown of the amino acid phenylalanine. Although we need amino acids for making proteins, too much phenylalanine is toxic for the brain. People with phenylketonuria need to restrict foods that are high in phenylalanine, and they need to avoid the artificial sweetener aspartame, which is made with phenylalanine. Since the 1960s, infants are tested for phenylketonuria, so you probably had a personalized nutrition test in your first days of life. The impact of individual genes is rarely so extreme. In fact, usually it's quite subtle. Here's an example. Omega-3 fats in fish oil help prevent cardiovascular disease, but to what degree it turns out depends on a person's genetics. The FinGen study looked at the APOE gene, a gene that comes in three flavors, APOE2, APOE3, and APOE4, with E4 being the rarest. The study showed that fish oil supplements lowered blood triglycerides in men with the rare APOE4 gene way more than anybody else. Even though eating fish is healthy for everyone, it's especially great for APOE4 men when it comes to heart health. Most health conditions aren't caused by a single gene variant. Rather, they're multigenic, meaning that many genes can influence risk. Your genetic risk is your unique combination of gene variants, with each variant playing a pretty subtle role. If we want to get personal about nutrition, we have to look at more than just one gene. And that's where nutrigenomics comes in. Nutrigenomics looks at interactions between diet and all the genes. Nutrigenomics can be used to understand the influence of diet on body weight. Harvard researchers created an obesity risk score by compiling 32 gene variants that are associated with a higher body mass index, or BMI. They asked whether a higher genetic risk score impacted the influence of fried food or sugar-sweetened beverages on BMI. Consuming fried food and soda more frequently amplified obesity genetic risk, driving a higher BMI. Not surprisingly, eating lots of fried food and soda was associated with a higher BMI regardless of genes. French fries and Coke shouldn't be principal players in anyone's diet, but their impact is intensified if you're genetically predisposed to obesity. But genes aren't your destiny. Other studies show that physical activity blunts the impact of obesity genes. Now, it's one thing to get personalized recommendations, and it's another to actually follow them. Does getting diet advice specific to your DNA actually lead to behavior change? The Food For Me study asked this question by randomizing their subjects into three groups. Group 1 received general nutrition advice, Group 2 received personalized advice based on their current diet, and Group 3 received personalized advice based on their current diet and their genes. Six months later, those who received personalized advice based on their current diet ate healthier. However, extra info on genes didn't make a difference. So maybe knowing your DNA doesn't make you eat better. This is similar to other studies showing that talking about genetic risk only weakly influences behavior. Does personalized nutrition advice lead to better health and well-being in the long run? Don't know. That's a big, huge, Grand Canyon-sized gap in knowledge. So far, there haven't been any studies that are large enough or long enough to know. Since there are still so many questions, professional organizations like the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics state that nutrigenetic testing is an emerging science that isn't ready for routine practice. Historically, medicine has been disease-focused. Personalized nutrition is shifting the focus to wellness. As technology develops, we're trying to measure everything, create algorithms to make sense of it, and translate it into sustainable behavior change. My take is that today, in January of 2020, you can get the best personalized nutrition advice by meeting with a dietitian who can give you recommendations based on your health and lifestyle. I can certainly envision a future where healthcare integrates genomics for wellness, but today they just seem to be subtle tweaks to general nutrition advice. That's what science tastes like. Thanks for tuning in to Nourishable. Share, like, and subscribe to stay up to date on all things nutrition.